Charles Ritz Road Channel. Today, I am riding some single track out here for now. Hopefully I can stay on this stuff. Kind of wanted to talk about gun topics a little bit. I know that a lot of people aren't into those, but a lot of people are, especially here in the United States. And before I start talking about it, to be clear, it shouldn't be illegal to do just about anything when it comes to guns. Our forefathers, if they were around, they would be like, let's uh, legalize everything. Rocket launchers, sure. But the topic I'm talking about is carrying either Israeli style or with one in the chamber. So Israeli style is just not having one chambered. And a lot of people say that's because they've used guns that weren't drop safe. And that could be, that could be true. However, I don't think it is. I think it's just that they train that way because they feel that it's the best way to two train. And that goes with any gun. I know this opinion is very, very uh, unpopular among gun enthusiasts. But I, I do think that Israeli carrying is the way to go. And the reason for that is there's currently 600 accidental discharge deaths each year. And I guarantee there's not more than 600 lives saved by carrying one in the chamber each year. There's no way. So just bare bones, statistically speaking, it just makes sense to not carry one chambered. I don't know why the argument is such a weird topic to talk about. Because if you talk to most gun enthusiasts, they say, well, if you're not comfortable carrying one in the chamber, you shouldn't carry it all. Well, I feel that that's pretty arrogant. And if you want to carry one in the chamber, that's totally fine. I don't... I don't care at all. I don't want anything to be illegal for sure. But that said, and there are so many people who are highly trained and who have been part of that argument. And then they accidentally shoot themselves or shoot somebody else or they lose a gun that has one in the chamber and they have kids. It's just an ugly situation a lot of times. It's very common. In fact, I remember in the paper, Oldley, one of the police officers left one in the chamber, set the, down, the gun down on a coffee table or something. A kid got a hold of it and shot another kid. And the kid was a toddler who got a hold of it. My argument for that is toddler is not going to be chambering around. There's just no way. But again, that said, I respect your right to carry however you want. The uh, problem with it is a lot of the manufacturers get blamed for accidental discharges. Like the SIG P320 was notorious for that because it had a for one, I had the uh, SRT trigger, which is a hairpin trigger that requires very little trigger pull in order to activate it. You get that thing in a holster and then you bump it with a piece of, piece of cloth or a piece of the holster whatsoever. So, 
there have been a lot of police that have bent over, obviously in a forward movement, where they had an accidental discharge. Again, the uh, SIG P320 was placed at fault for a lot of those. Um, they weren't drop safe, and that's legit. There for a while, and that's why I went by a used P320, to be honest. I would only buy a new one. Because SIG absolutely did fix the drop safe issue, the uh, trigger pull issue is a non issue. So, of course, in most situations, like in the case of a shooting that happened, God forbid if somebody came into a public place and just started blasting, I would hope that you could get cover and at the same time pull and chamber around in that scenario. Um, usually, that's going to be the type of thing that you're going to deal with. And in the case of a direct attack where somebody wants to harm you, you're not going to defend against that no matter how fast or, or how proficient you are. You're not going to defend against that because it's just going to happen without you knowing. You're just going to, one day you're going to be walking and somebody's going to come at you and suddenly you're going to be in the the other realm that's how fast it's gonna how fast it's gonna take place there's no defending against if somebody wants to directly harm you when when somebody completely blindsides you it doesn't matter how fast you are and so I think lives saved I think that number doesn't really drop if you start carrying one in your magazine and not in the chamber all you have to do is take a second not even that split second to chamber around so that's my thought on it I don't think that uh, carrying one in the chamber is necessary and what really bothers me about it more than a lot of other things is that there's an arrogance behind it where you hear a lot of people talk about it and they say, well, if you know what you're doing, you carry one in the chamber. You shouldn't be carrying a gun at all unless you carry one in the chamber. That's just not the case. There are many ways to carry. You should feel free to do whichever one you are comfortable with, whichever one you feel is the the best for you i think that in some cases it, it is very necessary to carry one in the chamber and in those cases i would say you're wearing a badge if you're a law enforcement officer if you're military um, in those situations you need to be having one in the chamber in those cases you're also carrying open carry out away from your clothing so it does make it quite a bit safer I definitely hope that you are not carrying a pendant carry like is the new fad recently because a Penix carry can blow your junk off you don't need a decocker on your gun because your gun will be the decocker if it's appendix carry. Zing! That hill is going to be a problem. I don't yeah we could work our way yeah I think we may have to go around that one but uh, the main thing is to get away from the negative connotations involved surrounding the uh, gun world 
and get away from the nervousness that people have when it comes to guns. A lot of people, you carry a gun around them and they get nervous. They start staring at your gun and get start sweating and get tense. And it's like, it wasn't that long ago when everybody carried a gun around. There were high schoolers putting them in their trucks, carrying them around on gun racks and a full gun rack. So yeah, the, uh, the culture has certainly shifted. You can tell that just by watching movies and see how people acted and um, just a lot of people had guns not that long ago and they didn't ever have crazy issues. Just watching a World War II movie and this guy got a revolver in the mail before he deployed. It was just in a box. There was no... FFL thing going on. So for those of you who don't know what an FFL is, it's a licensed firearms dealer that uh, is authorized to sell you a firearm. And so when you order something online or when you receive something in the mail that's a firearm, you have to send it to them, pay them their fee, and pick it up and do all the paperwork through them. You can't just get it directly. They have to make sure that you're safe and all that stuff. So um, that is a uh, process that, that probably should take place, but it uh, at the same time, it's a lot more expensive to get your guns. My FFL charges me $40 but he seems like the most reputable in my area. I just don't know of any other ones. But that process with the FFL in the middle there is a uh, procedure that is there to prevent felons from owning firearms. You know, I, uh, I don't mind. I don't mind that law preventing felons from owning the firearms. I mean, if you're a U.S. citizen. I'm sure the Founding Fathers would not approve of anybody not being allowed to have a firearm unless they were they were specifically a uh, violent person. But uh, I don't know. I mean, the rules of society aren't that hard to follow. If you have a felony, then you probably shouldn't be allowed some uh, liberties. The rules really aren't that hard to follow. If you go to prison for something illegal, then you've probably done that a thousand times before you went to prison for it. That's pretty antisocial behavior, so that's just my thought on it. I don't know if there is some kind of stipulation or some kind of uh, waiver form or anything like that where you can own firearms being a felon. But boy, would that suck if you were a firearm enthusiast and you caught a felony for, uh, like, tax fraud. And then suddenly you can no longer do what you love. That'd be crazy. That'd be like somebody telling me I couldn't ride motorcycles because I didn't pay my taxes. So I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but I don't see any guns jumping around, shooting people on their own. And I know that's a silly thing to say. Obviously, everybody knows that, but there are many lethal things that you could carry around with you and be a psychopath and do a lot of harm. Nobody gets freaked out if you're carrying around a nail gun. I mean, or driving a car. You know how many psychos drive cars? A lot of them. They could easily get that car into a you name the place a parade and then just mow people down with it probably a lot more effective than if they were shooting a gun there are very dangerous things in society and I think I know that this is getting off a topic off the topic of uh, carrying one in the chamber but as a fundamental part of your thought process 
and uh, in living in a free country, you have to understand that the uh, amount of freedom is, is directly directly correlates with how dangerous it is. Dangerous it is, and so if you're doing something dangerous and you're allowed to do it then you probably have a little bit of freedom. What's going on guys? I wanted to show you Onyx Off-Road, which is my navigational app that I use. It's a really nice map. You can just zoom right in on your waypoints. You can track all of your rides. A bunch of routes are already on this map. So you can just, as you're riding, follow these trails. And this is how I find a lot of my stuff. Anyways, guys, I've teamed up with them, so if you use code RACERRED, you'll get 20% off. And so there is one place where the only reason anybody gets hurt is because they cause it themselves. Because they are very safe, but they have zero freedom. And that's prison. If you want true safety, you gotta go live in prison. The only people who get hurt in there are using their fists and, you know, just making making weapons, making shanks and stuff like that, I mean, but truly, if a regular people went into a prison and just lived there, it would be so freaking safe. There's no, there's no cars, no guns, you have a sleep schedule that's already in order, you have three meals a day, it's all fairly healthy, you have a very safe situation and uh, so that's that is generally what people who are uh, anti-gun and anti-motorcycle or anti-anything that's generally their view is that a society that is as close to prison as possible is the correct way to live and mark my words I think that Okay, there's a, there's a couple predictions I have. One has nothing to do with this topic, but that is that uh, Michelle Obama is going to be the haymaker for the Democratic Party. And I've been saying that for years now. And nobody believes me, but I'm, I'm telling you guys, she's going to come out of nowhere and be the haymaker. So Michelle Obama, I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. And then there's another prediction I'll make. And that is that eventually self-driving cars will become a topic of liberty and a topic of discussion because they will be a lot safer than people driving around. But they will be way less fun, obviously. You won't be able to speed. They'll do what they want. And you won't be able to drive your classic cars anymore and have fun on the road. You'll have to go to a designated course or something like that to drive a regular car. And so when that that uh, comes to fruition, there's going to be a lot of people in society who are like not okay with it because that takes away all their freedom associated with going where they want, how fast they want, and being able to control their own destiny. And I think that I will be on that side of the argument. I don't want computers doing things for me. I want to activate my brain a little bit and be able to do it myself and have that level of freedom. So those are my two predictions for you guys. We'll see if they come true. The car one is almost a certainty. And let's see, he probably went this way. So anyways, as a uh, society, we definitely have changed in terms of how we think about firearms and so a lot of people have been completely alienated from them and the less we have 
the more people get alienated and they, the more people fear them and that's a real problem I don't want people to be scared of them and that's why I've been trying to teach my kid that uh, firearms aren't dangerous if you use them properly and all that stuff so but that relates directly to motorcycles as well people have become alienated from them if you watch videos of the 60s 50s even up to the 70s you got people riding all types of motorcycles even old grandmas right riding motorcycles and um, of all types and they're riding wherever they want to go like they're just riding old cow trails they understood back then that we are uh, we are every bit as valuable well we are not every bit as valuable we are more valuable than any other animal roaming the planet and uh, if, if they can roam the planet freely, then so can we. And a lot of people say, well, it's unnatural to ride on a machine, man-made machine. Is it? And it's not just that that they're regulating. We're getting regulated on all fronts. I mean, even to go hiking, you're, you're dealing with a lot of regulation now. So it's not just riding a motorcycle I'm talking about. felt that the further away you get from freedom and utilizing your freedoms the further away you get from realizing that that is the way you can lose track of the way and if you don't understand how things go out here whether that's carrying a gun or riding a motorcycle or whatever it is you enjoy you don't understand it and you don't do it with personal experience you won't really understand that it's going away you'll fall for things I mean the BLM uses in their language I can't even remember what they call a sand wash now but they make it sound really fragile in their language and it's not fragile at all it's clearly not fragile you, you know people with common sense can come out here and, and see that it's not fragile it's a completely chaotic thing that gets morphed around so much it changes shape it, it just there's no uh, really messing it up yeah certainly putting some tracks in it isn't gonna wreck anything. I mean, a lot of people can lose sight of this though. People who don't ride could easily lose sight and just listen to the government's rhetoric and, and suddenly they would start thinking that we are a bunch of planet killers out here killing fish, disturbing wildlife, messing up waterways, causing sediment, you name it we're we're wrecking stuff just by existing never mind that we are a gigantic ball of rock shooting through space and that our climate has shifted around like crazy throughout history and it's really likely that we're gonna hit by a meteor at some point and just wipe everything out Let's ignore all of that stuff and just concentrate on our little tracks. That seems smart. And that way, when there's no people out here to enjoy this, then nobody will ever enjoy it. And that makes sense too. Like, why would anybody want to enjoy the outdoors? It's just so wrong to do that. You gotta have animals out here and that's it, people. It just hurts my feelings to think that people would be out here with dirt bicycles, with motors, 
out here turning their throttles and stuff. Demolishing my planet. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. I went on some tangents, but uh, I hope it was entertaining. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace. All right, guys, I just wanted to give some of my Patreon supporters a shout out. I really appreciate them. Yucky Don't Eat is my newest one. Daniel Rausch, Brian Thomason, Mike Slater, Jason Froling, Jim Jolson Jr., Lance Darnell, Wade James, Kurt Kinghorn, Jared Bauer. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You guys have helped a huge amount for my channel to grow and to keep making content, and you are appreciated.